What is going on YouTube? It's Sankey here and I make videos on the stock market. Guys, I've got a jam-packed one for you today. There's a lot of opportunity out there in the stock market. Now, as we close off this week and we go into a fresh brand new week, I want us to prepare to dominate. Now, over the weekend, there's been news that the US public will start receiving the Pfizer vaccine on, on Monday after it was authorized for emergency use. Now, as you know, we're not just gonna read this and not do anything with it. This presents opportunity in the stock market. Why? Because eventually people are gonna get better, right? Rates are gonna drop and there's gonna be a lot more faith in the stock market, right? And a lot of these bounce back stocks, recovery stocks are going to rise and we wanna position ourselves to make sure that we benefit from them, right? So before I tell you the stock that we're gonna load up on on Monday, check out that link down below. That's Trading212. Go and grab yourself a free share of stock worth up to $100. Now without further ado guys, let's jump into the portfolio and see what is going on. Up on screen is my YouTube growth portfolio, currently standing at £43,000. Now, I come on here each and every day for full transparency to show you guys the portfolio that I started only five months ago, right? So you guys can jump in on the same picks as me, we can get you fantastic returns. Getting your portfolio from the, your first $1,000 to $2,000, then from $10,000 to $50, and then eventually from $50 to $100, right? We're building wealth over here. And one of the stocks that we're going to invest in and get your portfolios booming, right, is Delta Airlines. Let's jump into them. So up on screen, we have Delta Airlines. And I think this is a fantastic play for us to jump into next week. Now, this is a large US airline company that got hit very, very hard and they're not out of deep waters yet, but this is an amazing bounce back play. They have a lot of potential and they're one of my favorite airline companies, right? And I wanna show you guys why. Firstly, let's jump into their share price graph. So as you can see, what I like to see when I invest in companies, and I want you guys to start doing this too, is look for companies that have a long-term upwards trajectory, right? You can see that year over year, they are pretty much going up. Now, some years they're going up much more rapid than others, but you can clearly see there's a nice upwards trend, right? And this isn't too common for airline companies. So if we jump into American Airlines, you can see long-term, it's trending upwards and then pretty much trending downwards, right? As we come to the present day. If we go to Alaska Airlines, you can kind of see again, pretty much trending downwards over the long term. Now, I'm not saying these are two bad plays, but I just like to invest in companies that have that long term upwards trajectory. Now, what's also interesting to note is, as I said, I'm gonna teach you guys charts every single day, right, for the, for the rest of the month so we can up your game going into 2021. The yellow share price, the yellow line here is the short, is a short term moving average, right? and the red line is the long-term moving average. All right, so check this out. As you can see in this intersection here, the yellow short-term simple moving average has crossed underneath the red long-term simple moving average, right? So when these two simple moving averages cross, it often indicates either a buy or a sell signal. Now, in this case, the yellow short-term simple moving average is crossing underneath the long-term simple moving average that indicates a buy signal, right? So as long as everything else is in place with that asset, we have a buy signal here. And a lot of things are now coming into place for Delta Airlines, and we have this indication but via the cross of the simple moving average, and this indicates that we should buy, right? So this is a bit of chart analysis for you guys to add to your toolkit. So guys, hit that like button for me because going into 2021, we are leveling up. There's a lot of money on the table for next year, right? And we're gonna be putting tools into practice to make sure we hit them home runs all year long. So now jumping into Delta Airlines Q3 now, it's not pretty. They are still deeply in the red. As we can see, a massive 6.9 billion loss, right? But there are some key takeaways and some positives. So they say that they have liquidity of 21.6 billion. Now this is key to bear in mind because this liquidity is either cash or assets that they can turn to cash very, very quickly. And this should help keep the business running, right? So we can partner that information with the fact that they have a quarter, for that quarter they have cash burn of 24 million per day. And in September, they reduced that cash burn from 24 million per day to 18 million per day. Now this is, this is key information here guys, because if they have 21.6 billion liquidity and they're burning through 18 million of cash each day, they have 1,800 days as a runway, right, for their business. So they're not going out of, out of business anytime soon. 
1,800 days, that's three years, right? They have a three year runway, but it does get better than that. Now, initially Delta Airlines actually came out and said that they wanted to be break even by the end of this year, but that's now slipped to spring of 2021, right? So this is what their CEO is saying. And they've released some more interesting information to us. They are saying that that cash burn of 18 million that I just mentioned should now slow down to between 12 million and 14 million per day for the fourth quarter. This gives them an even longer runway, right? Of about five years. So they've gone from three years of a runway to five years. So the business is moving in the right direction, right? They're able to cut those costs, manage their business more effectively, reduce that cash burn and give them a long extended runway. So we shouldn't be fearful as investors about Delta going out of business. The question is, just when they have a bounce back, right? When that recovery would come. Now with the vaccine administrations going out and hopefully cases will slow down and uh, Trevor will get back up to speed, this could this is a fantastic bounce back play, right? This, this could jump 15% in a day, right? So we wanna position ourselves ready for next week, get some stock in Delta Airlines if you're not already loaded up on them, and then we'll just wait for the recovery in the stock and enjoy the um, enjoy the ride upwards. So now onto the question of the day part of the video, and this question comes from the Jewer. The question is, can you share a few good dividend stocks? Now this is a fantastic question because I don't often cover dividends on this channel. I have a separate dividend portfolio, but you guys know on here I share my YouTube growth portfolio, and we do high growth assets that can double up in six months, one year, two years time, right? But every now and then it's good to talk dividends. Now, in my opinion, there's three things you should bear in mind when you're investing into a company for dividends, right? The first is that it pays a decent dividend, and I'm talking at least 3%. Otherwise, it might make more sense for you just to put your money somewhere else and, and generate a higher rate of return. The second is that, in my opinion, it has to show some element of being a growth asset, right? There's no point in putting large amounts of money over a long period of time into an asset that is just falling off the chart, right? Because eventually you're gonna take that money out and it might be half of what you put in. It might be a quarter, it might be a fifth. So at least let it show some element of long-term growth, right? The third is that they actually have a good history of, of paying their dividends. Now, this the, the, the company can either raise a dividend each year, they can hold the dividend each year, or they can drop the dividend each year. Now, an example of that, a company that dropped their dividend is Wells Fargo. So I like to invest in assets that actually either up their dividend each year or they hold it constant. This gives me comfort in, you know, that I'm long, uh, investing long-term in a company that's gonna pay me a rate of return that's stable, steady, or growing. Now, I'm gonna share with you three of my dividend companies that I have in my portfolio. Now, the first one up on screen is JP Morgan. They pay a 3% dividend. Now, this is a large financial player. Right? I have faith in this company and they show good signs of being a growth asset, so I like them. The second is Pfizer. Now, Pfizer pay a 3.6% dividend. Again, nice signs of being a growth asset over the long term in their share price, right? They also have a good history of increasing their dividend since 2010. Now the third company, it's one of my favorite, one of my top, if not my top, is Abvi, right? Now Abvi pay a 4.85% dividend, right? So much higher than JP Morgan, higher than Pfizer, and to top it off, they show fantastic signs of being a growth asset and they have a long history, 49 consecutive periods of increasing their dividend, right? So those are three dividend companies I'm going to share with you guys today. So that brings us to the end of today's video. Please hit a like on the video. It really, really helps the channel out. Guys, light up that comment section for me. It's so good to hear from all of you. I'm reading and responding to all your comments and questions. Now, I've left down my email below so you guys can contact me if you need further help on chart analysis or just boosting your portfolio. Now, as I always say to you guys, check into the channel daily. The stock market is rapidly moving, right? So you never ever want to miss a beat. I'll catch you guys on the next one.